Will more than two banks fail? Is it time to buy gold? Recently, the FDIC took over two banks that were in trouble. Now we have reports that an additional 20 regional banks have in excess of $650 billion in bond losses. The Fed admits that their increase in interest rates have done little to bring inflation under control. They may well increase the amount and frequency of interest rates. Isn't it time to consider gold in your portfolio? From January 1st, 2023 to today, the price of gold is up twice as much as the S&P 500. Go to blacksandwhites.us, click on the gold bar, and reach out to Advisors Metals and ask Ira, is gold right for you? Call now. It's important. Welcome to Black and White, a conversation with Dan Perkins. It's time to bring all of us together to talk about the issues that concern us. It's time to hear from people who want to deal with only the facts. And it's time for you as Americans to re-engage in your right of freedom of speech. It's time for you to join me in the conversation on Blacks and Whites. Welcome to this edition of Blacks and Whites. And we have with us a very special guest today, Mr. Anthony, who as a visionary who thought about alternative media uh, literally decades ago and has spent fame and fortune to try and bring us to where he thinks where the, the future is going to be. So join us in welcoming Mr. Anthony and uh, welcome to Black and White. Thanks for having me, Dan. Thank you. You, you, you in our conversation before, uh, I would say it would be fair to indicate that you are a visionary and you spent a lot of time treasure and talent trying to see if your vision was correct it appears that it was but it was a long and difficult journey tell us a little bit about your journey god had to be 22 20 22 years ago you know me and a couple of friends of mine believed that the print newspapers were going to be gone and this is in 2001 when they just came off their heyday for for print media sales and back in those times nobody ever bought that story um, you know, so what we did was we set out to try and build a platform that would ultimately replace the daily newspaper. And I can tell you, Dan, we failed miserably multiple times. We were not media people. We didn't know how this needed to be done. Um, but, you know, we had what we thought was an idea and we had to figure it out. And so I ended up losing a couple partners and uh, we, I picked up another one and we continued on. And what I thought was the answer of a broadcast affiliate network was not the answer and you know we were the, the trick is how do you get local news in every market in america because if newspapers are going the way of the dinosaur the problem with the web is there's no money in web ads so nothing local works meaning you can't put up a facebook for schaumburg illinois or boca raton and think you're going to make a living at it. everything on the web is global facebook twitter linkedin uber amazon so we uh, we created a model for local news. And we had about, out of the 200 markets up and running, we had a little over 100 markets up and running providing local news. And that was through an affiliate network, very similar to how the networks like Fox and CBS have the TV networks with local affiliates. All of our affiliates were independent uh, radio stations with news departments. When COVID hit, I started getting people dropping off our network. And the primary reason was because no businesses are open and they were laying off their news staff. And so I, I started thinking about this going, well, what are we going to do to solve this problem? Because if all of your customers are, you know, stopping local news and, you know, going out of business, how are you going to provide local news in every market in America? And then one day I had one of those epiphanies in the middle of the night where I, um, I came up with an idea of a pay model for news reporters, where just like YouTube, they get a percentage of the ad revenue that appears around their content. So Dan, you know, YouTube has a monetization model. You have some people that make millions of dollars a year and some people that make nothing, right? It's up to them to build their audience and YouTube sells the advertising and the advertisers, they get a piece of the advertising that appears around their content once they get monetized or within their content. And so we, we changed our model to a monetization model for news reporters. And the first thing I did was, if, if you go to LinkedIn Navigator, you type in freelance journalists in the United States, at the time there was like, this is only like six months ago, there was 400,000 people that were out of work. Now it's pushing closer to 500,000 news reports, 460 plus is what the number is. And it's, I don't even need to tell you, BuzzFeed just reported layoffs or they're shutting down, uh, ESPN reported layoffs. I mean, 
the mainstream media is not expanding, they're contracting. So that's why that number is going to continue to get bigger. So we, we ran an ad and I, I had an incredible amount of people that, that signed up for it. And I only did it for like a couple of days. And I think I got like 150 applications. So I had to explain this. Now we've refined it down. Now there's a video they could watch. And if they're interested, they can set up a time and talk to us. Um, but we picked up probably 50 news reporters. And then I said, well, why are we limiting this to just the journalists? Why can't we deal with podcasters, both video and audio? So I started bringing on podcasters. And now we have 60, 70 podcasters. You know, all the people that were kicked off of YouTube and deplatformed, demonetized. Right. I, I got a ton of them on my site right now. And what we do, what they do is they post their link, their Rumble embed code. And then what they do is they share it on social media and we sell the ads for that. So the model now I see so clearly how the worlds are going to play out. Because as I told you before, you know, the mainstream media is, is not expanding, they're contracting. And you're dealing with a product that is an antiquated product. And if you don't believe me, the average age of the Fox audience, I was told is 68 years old, right? And I was at Turning Point USA. None of those kids, they don't watch TV. They don't listen to terrestrial radio. They don't uh, read magazines and they don't read newspapers. Everything they do is on their phone. It's all on demand. So the future of news, as I was telling you before, I now can see it clearly. It's going to end up, whether it's me or somebody else, forget me, it's going to be one global media giant by zip code. It's going to allow the public to interact and post their own news, views, opinions, and classifieds, which is going to drive more eyeballs. It's going to have a pay model for news reporters where they could log in, they could create an account, they could be monetized, and they could start writing local news stories like, you know, the, the high school football game, the city council being the bank robbery, the car crash. And then advertisers will be able to log in and buy their own ads and target the ad around the content of relevance as granular as one zip code or as broad as nationwide. That this, this is so clear to me, it's not even funny. This is easy. And you had mentioned that the mainstream media still has a big influence and they do, right? Because they still reach a ton of people. Uh, but what's gonna happen is over time, it's gonna diminish. diminish. Um, you know, the, the whole Tucker Carlson thing. To me, you know, a lot of people were very upset about this. And all I was thinking was this has to be one of the greatest things that's happened because what they did was just shed a light on who they really are. Because there's a lot of people that listen to Tucker that believe him, okay? And Tucker believes what he's saying, okay? However, I, I go to the gym every morning. There's a couple there that's in their early 80s, and they're at the gym five days a week. And they came up to me and said, can you believe they kicked Tucker off? And I said, well, there you go. And they said, we're never watching Fox again. My point is, is that you're eventually you're going to turn people off. And so what I, I expect, is there's going to be a mass exodus from Fox if it hasn't happened already? Let's let's talk about mm -hmm. Tucker, and we'll talk about Don Lemon, and we'll talk about the gentleman from NBC News who also got uh, fired uh, for different reasons. I uh, I wrote on uh, on Tucker's dismissal, and um, I've been in business uh, over fifty years. Uh, I've been a registered investment advisor for fifty years, and and so I understand money and dynamics and corporations and how they work and why they don't work. Um, I look at, at, at Fox News and th they signed a check on the day that they were to go to trial for $787 million. Now, I know you can hire a lot of, a lot of expensive hours times for $100 million. And I'm wondering if one of the reasons why they settled the suit on the day was to go to trial is that they realized that the information that they were broadcasting about Dominion was basically false. Now, taking that one step further, if that information, which was disseminated by the entire on-air staff of, of uh, Fox News, that it was basically false, and they knew it. They could not afford to admit, have to admit that they were they were misleading the American people. But it appears that that's that's what happened. And so, if they were misleading the American people, what does it say about the Republicans' position 
on election reform and corruption in election versus what the Democrats are saying. I got to believe that there are some millions of Americans who are now questioning whether or not Fox was honest with them about the information that they were blaming the Democrats. So that's one way to look at it. OK, the the other way to look at it is they limited their liability. They got rid of Tucker and maybe the pharmaceutical companies picked up the check for it. maybe it was the pharmaceutical companies that were telling them without us, you don't have a business. And if you don't get rid of this guy, we're not we're going to pull our ad bus from you. I mean, there's more than one way to look at this. The other thing is you're in this business. Did you have you seen all the the. Um, trying to think of what you want to call them, but all the different independent studies with the Dominion machines and the people got up and they were showing you like in Fulton County, how uh, 50,000 votes came in all time stamped the same time, date, second, minute, right down to the minute. Did you see any of that stuff? Yes. Was, was that fake? Because I don't believe it to be fake. There's been so many people that have shown this. Um, what about uh, the, the people that that did the uh, the documentary uh, Two Thousand Mules was that fake? I don't I don't I don't know. I I, I what I'm saying is that uh, Lemon is a different story than than Tucker. Tucker yes. was the number one guy on the network, the biggest revenue generator. And I said to people, don't have to worry about Tucker because there are two examples that I use to say he, he's going to land okay. First, we had uh, Rogan who uh, is now running a podcast generating $100 million a year in revenue. And second, even longer than that, is uh, Bill O'Reilly was filed, fired from Fox. And now his, his podcast program uh, is generating huge amounts of revenue for him. So I don't think, I think Tucker's now going to go back to a network. He's going to go independent like uh, Rogan and like, uh, because the whole universe of, Things are changing. We're, we're about to run out of time. How can people follow what you're doing? Uh, my domain is yournews.com. When you log in, your provider tells us where you live. If you don't see a city on top, you may be blocking it. Just click change your location, put your zip code in. It's going to look like any newspaper website. But the difference is, you know, we operate 20,000 cities. So there's one city called Chicago, but Chicago has 100 zip codes. Right? So we can drill right down to the zip code. If you, okay. One more thing. If you're a journalist sure. and you're looking to get monetized, we can handle that for you because we sell all the ads for you. Go okay. Ahead. We're speaking with Sam Anthony and we'll be right back after these messages. Will more than two banks fail? Is it time to buy gold? Recently, the FDIC took over two banks that were in trouble. Now we have reports that an additional 20 regional banks have in excess of $650 billion in bond losses. The Fed admits that their increase in interest rates have done little to bring inflation under control. They may well increase the amount and frequency of interest rates. Isn't it time to consider gold in your portfolio? From January 1st, 2023 to today, the price of gold is up twice as much as the S&P 500. Go to blacksandwhites.us, click on the gold bar and reach out to Advisors Metals and ask Ira, is gold right for you? Call now, it's important. Welcome back. And we're talking with Sam Anthony, uh, an entrepreneur in communications and news of the future. Uh, we should spend just a moment about uh, Don Lemon. He didn't he didn't come under fire the way Tucker, but he lost his job. But in my opinion, he should have lost his job a long time ago. I mean, he was a, was a terrible reporter and terrible, terribly biased and uh, racist individual on television. Um, I don't think the world is necessarily going to miss uh, Don Lemon. Probably not. And and I um and I I I don't watch CNN at all. However, I did listen to what he said with the comment with the the woman, which was uh, I think it was that the woman's in her prime between twenty and thirty or something like that. Right, you know? right. And so and I was kind of I laughed because I, I you know he's talking about those numbers would be more for fertility, I think, right? You know, and he was talking about why is she running for office at this age? Like she would have been in her prime back then. It didn't even make sense. But the, we live in a world that's so sensitive today, right? People get upset about everything. It's absolutely ridiculous. You know, somebody needs to just get thicker skin. Now, I'm not a fan of Don Lemon at all, but, you know, it's, I think the comment was stupid, but we live in a day where, God, you say the wrong thing, and next thing you know, you're out. 
But you can go back over his career and you can find lots of stupid things that he said and he never got called called out. Uh, but this time he lost his job. <clears throat> now, some people will say that's that's the uh, direction of, of new ownership and their desire to want to move the needle. And that's why several people have, who were extremely radical got uh, hosed. But I, I also want to point out uh, and I don't know whether you saw this or not, so if you didn't, it's okay. Um, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was interviewed by ABC News, or NBC News. And uh, the reporter, uh, Kennedy has been against the, the vaccines uh, from the very beginning and some other things, and they're clearly still supporting Biden and what he's doing. She was uh, indirectly accusing uh, Kennedy as lying. And, and after the interview was over, there was a footnote that she recorded how that uh, the interview was edited and stuff was edited out because they didn't believe it to be true and based on scientific evidence and all this stuff. Anyways, they were censoring, literally censoring a Democrat who was opposed to Joe Biden and what he had done and uh, were, were quite vicious about it. Uh, so there's still people in the media who are strongly aligned with Joe Biden, uh, even though other media has stepped up to the plate a little bit and begin to somewhat criticize. Um, when, when this new media concept that you have gets rolling beyond where it is today, um, Who's the truth detector? It's going to be the public. Um, the way our model set up is you have 210 DMAs, like television DMAs, right? Like New York's number one, LA's number two. So we're set up um, by TV DMA as well in terms of the markets for content distribution. And it doesn't matter whether you're a conservative or a liberal. We believe that all sides should be heard. But... If you're not a monetized person, anything you're writing is going to go into opinions, okay? Because that's what it is. And so whether the opinion's right or wrong is of no relevance to me. It's people that want to read them, let them share them, but, but it's an opinion. When it comes to the monetized journals, the way this is going to work is every market, every DMA is going to have an editor or more than one editor. And the way I explain my model, Dan, is I'm not in the media business, okay? Just, let's say you and I, built a football stadium anywhere in America. And you and I are never gonna play in the NFL. It's not gonna happen. But we own, we're the developers, we own the stadium. So what we do is we bring in the players, which in that case would be, you know, the, the Bears against the Packers, okay? And what happens is they're the draw. So people show up because they wanna watch them. And then we go sell them the tickets. And when they come inside, we sell them the popcorn and the hot dogs and the beers and the Cokes. In, in my business, I'm not the player. I'm just the guy who owns the stadium, the whole, the, your news, and where we could serve an ad to one zip code or nationwide. So in essence, we could have millions of customers buying ads, just like Facebook. But we don't, we don't tend to be, or we don't claim to be in the news business. The players are all the half a million journalists that are out of work that we're going to bring back and employ. And then every DMA is going to have to have editors, what I would call Think of them as the coaches because you can't have a hundred guys just running ever all of them covering the same high school football game or the same city council meeting. So at some point in time, there's got to be an organizational structure to this and you need to have people who understand the game. And those players are going to be people that have been in the business before. They're going to be people that have ran news departments. They understand how to do it. So, so this, this model that we use is, you know, the, the, the beauty of what we're doing is the, the journalists write the story. I only ask one thing, that you're going to tell the truth. I don't care about people's feelings. I don't want you to push an agenda. If you're an opinion, push any agenda you want. It doesn't matter. But when it comes down to the news reporting and us monetizing you, then you're going to have to put out the truth as you see it. If you're wrong, at least come out and, and make a statement saying, I screwed up and got this one wrong. That's all we ask for. So I I, uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I sign up with your service, mm -hmm. and uh, I live in Fort Myers. So I would I would be in the Fort Myers market, or would my commentary 
be available all over the country? So the way our system works is your content is going to be fed to a specific section. Okay. So if, if you're like, we've created a, uh, a, uh, your news video section, which is really all the political people who are kicked off of YouTube. All right. And they're in there along with, we also have right now, Brighty on TV live and then Liddell TV live. I'm looking to pick up Newsmax and uh, real America's voice at the live stream. So you could just watch it live on the site. Um, but, but then your content now is going to be distributed nationally. But what's going to end up happening, Dan, is as this gets bigger, you can, uh, let's say I had 2,000 of you and you're submitting content every day. I can't run 2,000 of them national. But here's the good news. You could still post to, where'd you say you were, the Tampa DMA? Is that right? Oh, Fort Myers. Fort Myers, okay. So you the Fort Myers DMA, okay. But when you share your story on social media, the link, Wherever somebody lives is where it opens. Just like if somebody posted their kid's Little League game, let's say it was your grandson and he lives in Minneapolis. They post it to the sports section in Minneapolis, but they share it with you on Facebook. When you click the link, it's going to open to the Fort Myers sports page and pull the Fort Myers ads. So as we get bigger and start to scale this, you can't run everything national, but they'll be broken down to their DMAs. So there's a possibility that some stories may be chosen to be run in more than just the Fort Myers market. Of course, yeah. And that won't be my job. That'll be the editor's job. So how do you how do you take these new editors mm -hmm. and screen them so you're not bringing the people from Twitter who were incredibly biased? Well, that's a, that, I, that's a good question. Um, and, I, and so we haven't really, even though I have a handful of editors, when we start bringing on these editors, what I'm going to be looking for are people that were in the, in the news business. There's no contracts they sign with me. They, um, they get a percentage of the ad revenue for the content they approve. And here's my rules. I don't care what your political bias is. It's of no consequence to me. I could care less. If there's a real story and it's about, doesn't matter, Trump or Biden, and it's factual, it needs to be run. If it doesn't, we remove you from the system and you no longer exist. Okay. So I, I'm going to tell you who's going to tell me. It's going to be all the people. It's going to be the it's going to be the person who broke the story that says, why is my article not running? Because it's factual. And that's when somebody at a higher level gets in and says, what's the problem? Um, I, I've done things, uh, a, a particular thing for years in writing my commentary that I, I still very rarely see. If I'm doing a story, <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, I, I just finished a commentary on the Secretary of Energy who wants to replace the uh, 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 tanks with electric battery operated tanks. And uh, I, I did a lot of research and have lots of sites, but I use hyperlinks in the body of the, the text so that people can go and see where I gathered information from and verify that I'm reporting it properly so that they can see what the sources are. A lot of people don't give readers sources. It seems to me that that's a very important issue today is to cite your sources so that can, people can look and see if you're telling the truth or not. I agree. I agree. Now, there's you have an audience of people that, have, that may have been reading you or watching you for years, and they trust you. But for the ones that don't, they want to know where you get this information. So the more, the more you give them, the more they'll trust you, right? Because we live in an age now where, where people can lie and people can create new things and, you know, facts that don't exist, right? So right. It, it, it's always better to be able to have transparency and show people that's right. the best way in my mind just to give them the facts okay so uh, we got about a minute and a half i want to i want to take where do you see your model and, and maybe i'm choosing the wrong words for you so that's okay if you want to change them where do you see your model impacting the 2024 election well, we got a lot of work to do, but I've got about 200 more podcasters that I have to reach out to that uh, somebody named uh, Ann Vandersteel sent me, said you need to bring these people on. So the more content I bring in, the larger the audience grows. As I told you before, we had 1.8 million people go through 37 million pages in the first quarter. So as we get bigger, the more the bigger you get, the more influence you have. So we're still in our infancy, but we're not small. 
we just need to get that to where it's at least a million, a, a million a month and then a million a day. So as we grow and as we bring on more content, the audience just keeps climbing. And then we're more than politics. You know, I've got, if you like golf, I've got golf. I see the golf balls you got back there, right? So we, we got the hockey games last night. Uh, you know, the, the Panthers won, right? So, you know, we've got everything. And by the way, my news reporters are covering these things. These are the people that were booted, that were, that lost their jobs because of the downsides. So all we're doing is picking up more and more news reporters. That's the cool part. So go ahead. I just want to say we're, we're, uh, literally out of time, but I wanted to give you another chance to help tell people how they can follow your service in their local community. Just log into yournews.com. And as long as you see a city name, you're fine. If not, uh, enter your zip code and it'll take you to your city. And we do local news and national news in every market in America. And we're building our own news organization from the ground up. This will end up becoming the next mainstream media at the end. Mark my word. Okay. We've been speaking with Sam Anthony and uh, great conversation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. We'll be right back. We are Americans, male and female, from many races and cultures from all over the world. One thing above all else is we are patriots who protect our nation and defend, when necessary, our Constitution from attacks both foreign and domestic. Today, as American patriots, we must take back our country from those who want to destroy it and us. We must start by taking back our children and their education. Parents, not union, should be in charge of our children's education. We must be sure that they are taught about the greatness of America and its people. Our children should not be indoctrinated with the belief that parents are racist and are evil and trying to destroy the world. As patriots, we must take back our country from foreign nations who want to destroy us and our way of life. Yes, as patriots, we want America to be first. We want an open and fair trade policy, energy independence, safe cities, and secure borders where we can grow and prosper as a nation of free people. Become an American patriot. Help take back America by voting Republican. Inflation for most people is causing them to use their credit cards to try and make up for income shortfalls. How big is this problem? In the second quarter of 2022, Americans added $46 billion to their credit card balances. Some of that could be you. The Federal Reserve Consumer Credit Report showed that the rate of interest on credit cards went from 14.56 to 16.65%. Those Americans struggling with credit card debt saw their delinquency rates escalate from 1.66% to 1.81%. The Cambridge Debt Consolidation program may be able to help you reduce the interest rates by two-thirds and cut your time to pay off the debt from 30 years to as little as five years. If you're struggling and you want professional and objective help getting your credit house in order, then call 1-855-435-2066 or go to the website cambridgeyescredit.org forward slash bw hyphen podcast and get your house in order. Thank you for joining us today. And we'd like to hear your comments or questions. So go to bwradionetwork.com. That's bwradionetwork.com. And give us your questions or comments. And thanks for joining us today.